I was the speaker that was on before him, and I'm glad I wasn't the guy on after him. I motivate my audiences from my experiences playing with people like Sting, Elton John, people like Buddy Guy, Ray Charles, uh, Avril Lavigne, Michelle Branch. To have him performing right in front of you, along with being a motivational speaker, is such a unique combination. It was absolutely remarkable. And I realized there were seven things, I narrowed it down to seven, that have made me successful. The same seven ways that I have an extraordinary life in the music business, which is so unpredictable for over three and a half decades. Out of all the shows that I've seen in Vegas, this was hands down the best. If you want to be good at something, you got to put in the time, you got to work hard. When you bring me into your organization, I'm going to motivate, I'm going to entertain, I'm going to educate, I'm going to play rock and roll drums with rock and roll music. Everybody's going to leave with something. I love the shirt, I love the boots. Kenny, always a pleasure. John Fogarty, ladies and gentlemen. In the music business, you can be popular one year and gone the next. Never seen again. But we're talking, I mean, Rolling Stone just named me the top 100 drummers of all time in any style of music. That's a pretty big honor. But I'm going to play a bunch of songs from uh, some artists that I've recorded through the last 35 years. I'm going to tell you some stories. And, uh, and then I want to share with you how I became successful and have stayed successful in the music business, which is one of the most difficult businesses in the world for 35 years. And what I tell you will transfer into anything you do in life. The life principles, you know, you don't get to his level without the education and the dedication and the hard work. So a lot of people see a drummer and they think, oh, the guy goes and listens to rock music and plays the drums. This is a guy that graduated from college and worked eight hours a day. And his RPS system, where he talked about repetitive tasks done over and over and over again, that's a life principle that applies to any business. It doesn't matter if you're in sales or human resources or whatever, it's you take a system and you follow it repetitively over time until you master it. And he's, he's truly a master. RPS, repetition is the preparation for success. Real simple, repetition of anything. I'm not bored, are you? <laughs> if I do this every day, all day long, I get good at it. So that when I get up on stage, I can do that all over the drums. Still going, still going. Because I practice this, remember I told you? Three times a day. And then sometimes I can do it with my feet. that skill of going <laughs> that was that's the repetition of that except I'd use it to do other things with it the same Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So, lifting weights is a repetition. You want to get big arms like that? You lift weights like that. So that you're like that. Anything. Um, repetition of, of studying. Repetition of, if, you, if you're a soccer, is there soccer players out here? You keep shooting, keep shooting. Keep practicing. You want to get good at making the ball go like that? Do it for two hours a day. And I, in a month, you're going to be better. You're going to learn something from it. Repetition of anything. Repetition of using your brain a certain way. You know, it's just, it, that's what works. And just connected so well to the audience. It was amazing. And the students reacted in a way I've never seen before. They were just mesmerized by his talent. And the message he was giving everybody was just what you want to take away and it motivates you and I want to go do 100 push-ups right now. <laughs> He's motivational. He 
is down to earth. He tells wonderful stories. He's just an incredible person. Healthy life is a wealthy life. This is serious stuff. Because if you're not physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy, all the other thing I just talked about is gone. I mean, like a perfect example. If you're laying in bed, you can't be on stage. So I take health real serious. Okay, here's the big eight. You ready? All right, weight training. Now, you don't have to be huge, but here's what's good about weight. Just keep this in mind. When you, when, because you're young, you don't have to worry about this. When you get older, your hormones start to go down, and when you lift weights, it builds your hormones back up. Hormones fight off disease, keeps you <clears throat> healthy and young and articulate and like me. Cardio, same thing, but cardio exercises the heart muscle. Dude, I heard a rumor, I read this in the newspaper, I saw it somewhere, that if the heart stops, you die. Man, I'm not taking any chances, I'm keeping that thing going. So... Cardio, cardio keeps that heart going. And I got a huge heart, you can tell. Uh, stretching, that just keeps you limber. Diet, it's almost like not what you eat, what you shouldn't eat is more important. So, obviously I already told you, fruits and vegetables are good. You can eat steak, fish, or, and, and, and uh, chicken. You know, just that, make sure you eat tons of vegetables and try to stay away from processed food. Supplements, I take supplements, I take vitamins because I travel so much. You know, I, I take a multiple vitamin. I take a lot of fish oil. Fish oil is good for about 30 diseases. It's supposed to be good for your hair, but obviously <laughs> I missed out on that one. But it's good for everything. Okay, water. Check this out. Water you need for every organ in your body. Everything in your body needs water. Everything. So you can live without food for 40 days. You can only live three days without water. And then sleep. But sleep is really important because it repairs the body. And at the very last hour, which is the seventh or eighth, I've heard, it makes you remember everything that you learned that day. And finally, meditation is good because if stress is the worst thing for your body. Stress makes you sick. Stress can bring you down. Meditation gets rid of stress. Those are my big eight. Well, he's a personable individual. He's a guy that's going to get along with everybody, and he wants to make contact with the audience. He's trying to give uh, uh, his, his words of wisdom in, in a way so that it's, it's free-flowing and it's friendly and it's inviting. He's very engaging. I, would, I wouldn't hesitate for a minute to have him in any of the other functions that I would ever go to. What I learned about being in a band is the band is like a team. It's always greater than the individual. Are you like a drummer or the bass player or the singer, or the guitar player in your office? But you see how you can't do it without all the components. It's the team that makes this sound or makes this thing work. I've always looked at it like that. I'm doing the Ford Theater. That's where Abraham Lincoln got shot, you know that. So I'm doing this thing with John Fogarty, a variety show. Now, all right, one thing is, I've met a lot of people, but you know, I was meeting the President of the United States, Bill Clinton, peak of the Monica Lewinsky situation. <laughs> peak. <laughs> We're in a semicircle like this, and the First Lady and Bill Clinton walk, you know, they're walking down to shake our hands. They shake our hands, and they get to us, and I'm like, whoa. I don't say anything. They go past us, and they go to David Copperfield, and they come back to us. The credits are rolling. You know, the credits are rolling, and I'm going like, oh, my God, he's coming back. So I go, here, can you stand up? you got to help me. So I said to this, this just popped out of my head. I go, uh, Mr. President, I, I was just in New York, and I was just in L.A., you know, doing sessions. And I said, everybody, I told them I was coming here, and you're going to be here. And they said, listen, tell the president, we, we love you, we support you, we're so into you. He got the big smile on his face. Not only did he shake my hand, but then he did this. And that, I mean, we don't, when people shake your hands, they don't usually do that, right? It's like, wow. And then he gets in close. Don't worry, I'm not going to kiss you. And he, uh, <laughs> he, he didn't whisper in my ear. He looked at me and went, you know, they've been trying to get me, they've been trying to get me out of office for six years. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> 
every business is a tough business, but real estate, you have to deal with a lot of rejection and you have to get back up and keep going. And so his message about, you know, you see him as a star and you think he's made it, you don't think he walked those, you know, that road. And when you find out, I, 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 took, I, I took the nose also and I got back up and kept moving forward. So I think that's a message. Keep moving forward and persevere. So I executed my second goal, which was to be in a rock band. I got my first audition uh, with a big group, which was Johnny Cougar, who eventually became John Cougar Mellencamp and then John Mellencamp. But that would be my, I guess, my big break. That really did it. That launched me into the dream that I always had, and I did it. Took, and then even with the Mellencamp band, it took a lot of work. I had some big barriers I had to go through. I mean, I got fired for a second, and got back, and I made it come true, man. So I get down, I get this big monster kit set up that would be good for Rush, and um, <laughs> they said, uh, do you know any of the songs? I went, I'm familiar with the songs. So we played two songs, and dude, I mean, I crushed it. Two days of recording, I'm fired. <laughs> this is what I know now, what I didn't know then. My purpose in this band to get John's songs to be on the radio, become number one. That's my job. So when I got in the band, I didn't have the skill set to do that. And John was looking for me to have the answers for him, and I didn't. I think the thing that motivated me to not go home when John said you're fired is I wanted it so bad. The bottom line is I came up with another solution to the situation that I was in. John thought the solution was to send me home. And I had to come up with another way of reasoning to explain to him why I should stay. That would benefit both of us. Now it's time for me to go out. And I'm like walking to the drum set. I'm going, you got 20 feet to save your career. 15. What are you going to play, Kenny? You got 10. You got five. What are you going to play, Kenny? What are you going to play, big guy? And I'm going like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like... But you better hurry up because you're going to lose your job. You did it, lost it once before. What are you going to play? So the first thing I did was, remember, that little angel popped up and said, start it one eighth note later. So instead of one, two, three, and four, one, you start one eighth note later. Same rhythm, one, two, three, and four, one. And before I could look up, John said, hit a cymbal. And then I went, you know what, Phil Collins, I love you. I'm going to copy your Phil <laughs> off of In the Air Tonight. And then I went, I ran out of drums, so I had to do something else. So I added a triplet. <laughs> something like this. And <laughs> I've been fired. I've been let go. And every time I have always come out surviving and benefiting from these life-changing moments. Every experience I have that seems like a life-changing experience made me grow, made me become who I am today, has helped me become successful. I think your drummer may be a little anemic. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>